Being on a coral reef is, is like swimming through the most beautiful kaleidoscope painting you could ever imagine. You're like immersed in this canvas of shapes, colors, patterns, light dancing, and then the fish, you know, moving up and down. It's like it's living, breathing, massive organism that's just full of life. This is nature's perfection. The Great Barrier Reef is facing perhaps the biggest bleaching event in history. It could be the end of the Great Barrier Reef. Paul gets a lot more depressed than I do, and he gets a lot more negative, and he goes into that dark space a lot easier than I do. And then I have to find the resources emotionally and otherwise to pick both of us up. And I do that by finding people like Emma. You know, she really gives me hope. I'm the team leader of the Future East team at the University of Technology, Sydney. And our group is trying to understand if there are things that we as humans can do to try and buy time for corals as we tackle climate change. She's studying why when corals are under stress, so many of them die but a handful survives. What is it about those survivors that make them be more resilient? The coral itself is just a structure, it's just a building where all this life is supported. You get nudibranchs and starfish and you get, you know, the big predators like the snappers and the sharks and the mantas. But the corals, of course, are alive, they're animals. Corals are so complex, right? We look at the reef and we see this structure and at the foundation of that a coral and it's an animal with microscopic algae that are like the solar panels that are giving that animal all of its energy and then you've got bacteria viruses fungi all these other things that all have a role that they play and we don't know what they will do the reefs are bleaching because the oceans are too hot it's as simple as that and when they're too warm the algae actually become toxic to the coral they're expelled from the coral and the coral turns white Basically, the coral is starving. It has very little energy reserves. Without those algae, we're watching them starve. I mean, I was hoping to see a bit of death, like so we could, you know, do what we do with Sea Legacy and share it with the world and talk about the issues like we do. And all of a sudden, it's just like, holy shit. We don't need to exaggerate anything. You know, it's just like, it's just, it's just. Didn't think we we're going to see it in our lifetime, really. It's been happening since the 1980s on the Great Barrier Reef, but it's speeding up. We've had five mass coral bleaching events in the last eight years. We're seeing one in 2024 that has expanded across nearly all of the Great Barrier Reef. And not just in Australia, it's happening to reefs all over the world. The water in the ocean is just too warm. For a system that's taken so long to evolve and to exist, and we're destroying it in you know, a really short time period is just tragic. I fear that we won't have reefs, at least as we know them, in our lifetime. Corals can be really resilient if we give them a chance. We've seen from prior events that corals can come back. We're in this cycle of like, there's gonna be loss after loss after loss. And our job as scientists, if we are gonna intervene, is how do we get the reefs to be as resilient as possible before the next stress event? I'm currently on Heron Island with students trying to use technology to allow us to assess very quickly the thermal tolerance of corals to try and predict winners and then propagate those in our nurseries to get them back onto the reef to hopefully increase the local resilience of those coral populations. There's just so much we still don't know, and that you know fills me with wonder about what the secrets are that our reefs hold. What is the science on if, if we stopped all fossil fuels tomorrow? There's obviously the half-life of, of carbon yeah. in the atmosphere. Like how many years is this? Is like at least a decade for some re-equilibrium, and obviously that depends on how much we continue to put in. You can be as hopeful as you want. You can talk about replanting coral. You can talk about the scientists and the conservationists and people doing good work, but you're watching an ecosystem die. Like unless we deal with fossil fuels and carbon, we have lost this. It doesn't matter if you're in Australia or if you're in Europe, the fossil fuels that are going into the atmosphere at some point are absorbed by the oceans. If we lose reefs, the knock-on effects that we will feel 
we can't even imagine what they will be. They buffer coastal ecosystems, so with sea level rise, we could see intensified flooding, and those people are gonna be displaced. And then you're gonna see more climate refugees, and that will have social and economic impacts that will be far reaching. And if we lose coral reefs, it means we're gonna lose the forests, means we're gonna lose the sea ice, it means we're gonna see global collapse of all ecosystem. We're gonna lose these reefs that feed a billion people around the world. All of a sudden, you're gonna see the world go into absolute chaos. It's the beginning of the end. Sounds pretty alarmist. Yeah, it's alarmist, but it's, it's the truth. I am furious because this is not something we found out last week. You know, we've known since we experienced the first bleaching event that this was gonna happen. Let's go at this with our eyes wide open. Let's stop fooling ourselves. This is going to die, and it's going to die in our watch. We are victims of a system that we built for ourselves. You know, we live in this economic system that is intrinsically flawed and unable to solve the problem. You know, it is a symptom of something much bigger. The only thing that is gonna guarantee a future for reefs around the world is climate action. In my mind, I have this, you know, scenario where, you know, my son is in his 40s or 50s and, and he says to me, well, you were a scientist studying this. Why didn't you do more? Why didn't you say more? Why did you just write your papers and not try and shout from the rooftops that this is the reality? I want for my son to have a healthy planet and I want him to have the ability to go swim on a coral reef. I don't know what else to do other than to keep trying. This is... This is what we do. This is what we've spent our whole lives getting better at, and that's telling important stories. That's all we got. It's just to keep trying, to keep fighting, to stay in the game, keep, keep charging ahead, and it's the only thing that's gonna keep me sane. Some days it's really hard to get up and keep going, but ultimately, what's the alternative? To give up and to hope somebody else does something? Everywhere I go, I meet thousands of people who are giving it their all. Filmmakers, storytellers, scientists, corporate leaders. I mean, there's lots of people that are really awake and trying. There's a hopeful moment in 2024, and that is that half of the population of this planet is going to go to the polls. We get to vote for new leaders this year. Look at your children and ask yourself, who am I gonna vote for? Let's vote for planet Earth.